Let me show y'all into a morning in the Bickley household. I'm listening to the Wiggles in the kitchen. So my plan for today was actually I froze tomatoes that I, from where we grew in the summertime. And I thought I had enough where I could can them, but I also don't have a water bath canner, so I was going to do it in just a regular pot. But this is literally all I got. It looked like more, so it's really enough for like a can. So like, screw it. What we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna make some pasta sauce and have spaghetti tonight for dinner. So we're gonna make some pasta sauce this morning and then we have some stuff to do outside because I was out earlier letting Rune out and there was a coyote in the yard. No bueno. Let's make that pasta sauce first. So we're gonna turn our eye on, let the pot heat up. I did have to go to the store and get some fresh basil because the basil that I planted is actually lemon basil, which I don't think would have been the worst thing, but honestly, I just want plain basil. So we put some olive oil in the pan. You always heat your pan up first before you put the olive oil on there. At least that's what I heard from an Italian person. All the way around, get our mixed garlic. Measure with your heart. Pretty much just gonna get this little aromatic. This is a super simple recipe. Just garlic, parsley, oregano, fresh basil, salt, and pepper, and of course tomatoes. Get that nice and smelling good. Put in our tomatoes. warm up a bit. Do about a teaspoon parsley. Quarter teaspoon of oregano. And you grab you off some fresh, fresh basil. A couple leaves, put about four leaves. Four leaves just sounds good. Let it start to meld together. I'll wait for the salt and pepper because I'll do it to taste based off of how this tastes. You can add more, less. That way it starts to do it's not good. You can continue to let it warm up. Take our immersion blender. And just blend it all together. And that's it. We're just gonna let this simmer literally all day long it's gonna it's gonna be less chunky it's gonna melt all together it's gonna be delicious
So the reason I needed to go ahead and get this started today, and I'm gonna try not to get frustrated. It's actually a really nice morning, and I'm not super tired. I had a wonderful cup of coffee this morning. Uh, so things have been going pretty well. So, still a little hot. <clears throat> there was a coyote right there this morning. All, the whole time I've been here, I've only seen a coyote one time, and that was on my trail camera in the woods. Never had any issues with things going missing, animals being attacked. Oak has always been in the back. He always barks. I feel like he has helped keep him away. But the fact that those trees made it seem like the woods came a little closer, I feel like that's the whole purpose that he was up here, the whole reason he was up here. And so it was not like a rabid looking one. He was actually very healthy. He, she, whatever. It was, a, it was very healthy. It was by itself. Um, but still, does not need to be on my property. There's enough woods out there, enough stuff to eat out there. Um, that's why we manage how we manage when it comes to deer hunting and even ducks. We don't duck hunt back there or nothing like that. So, uh, I mean, there's even squirrels, rabbits, all the good stuff. I do not need them in my backyard where my kids play, uh, where my chickens, right now, chickens can get out because there's a larger limb kind of on the fence a little bit. Um, but this one I wanted down, that way I could get, it just seems like the yard continues. And then a little hole over here where I walk to go down to um, the pond and the hunt stand. I'm going to get my trimmers up, trim that up, I'm gonna make it look like people live here because they don't want to be around people they want to eat they want a free meal of course they're animals i get it same with hawks i don't want hawks going after my stuff so i have oki and oki's a good boy if you don't know who oki is i'll show you there's our big boy oki he likes to smile at us oak you're eating can you smile oki oak he's like leave me alone trying to eat Sit. Come on now. What you eating? Mama gave you some scraps. Yeah. So this is our livestock guy in the oak. That's Rune. He's my new puppy. We just rescued him. So I'm training him. Oak, he's a good boy. He has protected our chickens. When we had goats, he protected our goats. And as you can see, his pen, you know, their pen comes all the way down here. This is where the tree is on the fence. It's mainly, it, it landed in just a way where the limbs are on the fence that really push them down. So of course the chickens can jump up there. I really should, I'm probably gonna start cleaning up those limbs. This long behemoth is gonna take a while. But the limbs, I can work on the limbs. But I think y'all have seen enough wood cutting today. Correct? I mean, it's kind of boring. So I'll see you after a while, crocodile, <laughs> later alligator, when we start canning. Because y'all like to see that stuff, right? I do. I enjoy canning. So we're canning broth, not meat, just broth. Catch you, catch you in, a, in like a... Well, after a lot of work, we're now at canning stage. We'll get our jars. We got some water. We had some water running, but it got turned off. Hot water running so I can sterilize my jars. Remember, warm liquid, warm jars. So, you don't want to crack. Hot, so, do. Way I sterilize them is I, of course, I fill the sink up with hot water and then uh, white distilled vinegar. So, in my canner, I have the All American canner. I can't think of what size it is. Um, I can fit 14 wide mouth pint jars. Uh, so we stack them on top. So we've got 14 jars in there. What's in this uh, slow roaster is more than 14. So usually what I do is I'll take another jar or two and I'll have them in the refrigerator. We'll use them quickly. But the lids, the four jar lids, wide mouth, these things are awesome. Thank you, Jess. She gave them to me last time we were over at her house because I was out of lids.
here. Yeah, it kind of got a little full. But whatever's left of the chicken, all the onions and the garlic in here. Those are good broth. That liquid's gonna stay hot for a while. Of course, like I said, our jars are in here with the lids. Right now I'm putting hot water in this gallon jug and that's gonna go into our canner and I'm gonna turn the uh, heat on to the canner to keep that water hot because again, hot liquid, hot anything, hot jars, hot water. You don't want hot jars, cold water, cold jars, hot water. You'll break the jars. So once this gets filled up, put it in our canner and then we'll start transferring our jars over here, filling them and then we'll put them in the canner. So this is what it looks like when I fill it double stacked, of course. So one thing I do also do is for the lid, I take olive oil and put it around the lip to ensure a really good, just a very little bit of, like just, very lightly. I do not make it thick. Basically, I just want to make sure that it seals well, gets any kind of debris off if there is. So I've already wiped it off like that. And then my canner is backwards. That's not recommended. <laughs> There's an arrow right here. There's a notch right there. There's a notch right there. You line your arrow up. Like that. Your arrows line up with a notch. So all your things are here. It also has a little stay tuned, little tabs. If you know anything about putting tires on, you're pretty much going to adjust. You want to make sure the lip looks relatively even. And then, like you do your lug nuts, you do it in a star pattern. You start by doing it loosely. That way it's nice and even. And then you can tighten it down. You just want to make sure that the lip right here is relatively even all the way around. I mean, you have a good seal. Start tink, tink. Once you get a steady tingle tingle like that, you're going to adjust the heat because you only want it to do that ting ting thing. Um, a couple times every minute but now that it is doing that that is when you set your timer whoop, for twenty minutes Come on, I thought my finger would do it. There it goes, 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, I'll tell you what comes next. Now that the timer has gone off, cut the heat and you let it decompress all by itself. You do not take the weight off. Don't touch it. Do not touch it. Until that pressure gauge right there Focus until that pressure gauge right there says zero. We do not touch anything. So we just continue to continue to sit here and watch suits. Now you get to hear the most satisfying thing ever, and it's a little 
as everything starts to cool, that seal pops. It's awesome. I would let you hear it, but in order to do that, I wouldn't be able to continue watching suits. So you just have to trust me. It's very satisfying. Look how gorgeous that is. That sunshine is shining through that goldenness. Ooh -wee. And we got a pasta. Look at this. Look, look at this. Look, a little cheese stick. This is some parmesan. I do put ketch uh, ketchup, I might call it ketchup, hot sauce on everything. Frank's hot sauce. That's why I have those peppers. Because I want to recreate Frank's for myself. So, I also got angel hair pasta. delicious I appreciate y'all again hanging out doing what we do best that's just living life thanks y'all